Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another week of uh, Analog Television, the show where we spend an hour total analog escapism and not mentioning the C word. Um, this evening, really excited. We've got um, a couple of people on. One of them's Graham. Not excited about that, but it happens. <laughs> um, but the other guy is brilliant. So it's Howard from West Yorkshire Cameras. He's dining in from the north. Um, and here we go. Look at this. We've already had a lot of um, abuse from Graham about Howard being from Yorkshire. I don't understand why. Howard, welcome. How are you doing, buddy? Hello, I'm good, thank you. I like the fact your backdrop is, um, wow, a really good one. Like the Zoom backdrops have really got better, but that seems to be like a custom <laughs> design. It's just, it's, it's even real. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great to see you. So you are sat in front of West Yorkshire cameras. Uh, yeah, right in front of the shop. Um, it's really warm in there. <laughs> so, <laughs> and um, yeah, it's a bit echoey out here, but we should be good. Yep, and, a, and a, we've also been warned that there's a massive clock that every 15 minutes chimes and um, yeah. like little men come out and do a dance or something. I don't know quite what that's going on. But um, now a lot of people have, um, have pinged in advance. Like when I, I go out and I say, look, questions for the guest. Um, this week was less questions and more people being like, oh my God, Howard has all my money um, from either <laughs> cameras <laughs> or lenses. Or oh, accessories. It's, it's, it's now gone to the tax man and the, and the rent and everything. So, no, I don't have okay. all your money. Good, you're good. So, so, Howard is just a conduit for the tax man. That's not, <laughs> a, <laughs> that's not something to make us feel good. Um, brilliant. But no, it's lovely to have you. And we'd better talk to him. Graham, how are you doing? Is that neat vodka you're drinking out of a wine glass to be classy? No, not this evening. Um, it is gin and tonic this evening because it's really, really warm in here. And I've drunk all my cider. That was brilliant. All right then, so let's get um, let's get stuck right in. So we did get a few questions come in, um, and just in case, Howard, there's some people who aren't aware of West Yorkshire cameras. Um, what do you do? Where are you from? <laughs> How do you end where up? Where from? Well, that's <laughs> the number one. Name a little bit. Um, we're in West Yorkshire. We're in Leeds, and we sell cameras. But specifically, we sell uh, you know analog cameras that's all we do hence why i think you might have chosen me to come on here I'm not sure but yeah <laughs> i didn't choose you to be up to be clear i didn't choose you um it was a re specific request although it has to be said um me and howard do go way back he is pers he's responsible for an om1 a uh 200 mil lens i think for it that went on safari um yeah howard you can see remembers all of these um, and we hung out a lot. He came to my birthday. Oh, uh, Howard came to the one photo exhibit I've ever put on. True story. Back when I lived up in happy, happy Yorkshire. Um, but at the time, you were in a different place. So this is, is this your third location for the store? Uh, I guess technically maybe fourth, because it started in Huddersfield on like the market on like a sort of semi-permanent like basis then we went to the corn exchange in leeds mm. and there was a small shop and then it got a bigger shop and then the lease ran out and things were terrible so we came here <laughs> that's brilliant so getting bigger and better with each one and um yeah, yeah and we're not gonna talk about the c word. what's the c word this week graham uh, carbon fiber Carbon fiber, excellent. You're so good at marketing, it's unreal. Um, that will come back later. Yeah, we're not going to mention loads about the seaweed because it's nice to have in some escapism, but obviously you're running a, a retail shop. We would class you as essential retail. I'm pretty sure the government probably didn't. Um, how has it been? Has it been all right? Um, yeah, it's, it's okay because we, we obviously sell things online, so that's been keeping us going. All, all of you lovely viewers uh, have been putting orders in and keeping us busy, so... There's me and there's Adam and there's Mike and we've pretty much all been busy in some in some respects. So um, Adam and Mike have been working at home doing emails and stuff, um, and then I've been taking them stock to sort out and like put on the website. And then recently Adam's been sort of coming back in um, and doing packaging and stuff and just kind of keeping things going. Yeah, so it's, we are busy. Like it's uh, it's just we're not open, I mm. suppose. So yeah, it's going all right. It's going all right. No, oh, no, that's fantastic. I mean, it'd be, um, yeah, as I say, there's lots of people here who have um, who've definitely bought from you and visit fairly regularly. The, um, 
So when you when you have your online stuff, because you have your website, we'll go on to it in a minute, just probably just to browse for us really rather than for anyone else. Um, did you, have you had to like was that already pretty much ready to go, or have you guys had to like get that good for good for lockdown? Um, no, it was it was it was pretty much ready to go. I think um, I think the the website is probably one of the stronger aspects of the shop. I mean, um, the shop is great like physically, but you know sometimes people can't get to it and things. So we, we I, I really try hard to make it a good website. I have added the. Um, the section for you know sort of broken stuff for parts call it mm. an outlet where you've got something broken that's but it's not really you know it's better than throwing it away or somebody might use it for parts we, we got that up and running that was being that's been something i wanted to do for ages actually mm. whilst we put sort of more had a bit more time not having to be open every day got that sorted got some like backroom stuff sorted but yeah generally the website was just ready to to, to go and um just, just putting things on it is always a massive, um, yeah. like, time-consuming activity for us all. So yeah. No, because the um, that, when you said that, I think that's um, the the chaps uh, camera repair. Um, they they yeah. do that as well, don't they? Where they have like, they they repair stuff and send it out, and then they have just a, a, I think they have a small warehouse by now that is just <laughs> stuff that can't pass their tests, but is better than being scrapped. Um, yeah. Um, there's a camera repairer um, in Newcastle under Lyme and it's called PJ Camera Repairs and I remember once I took a bunch of stuff there to get sorted out um, I've not used them in a while because they tend to do more modern stuff mm. but I took a bunch of stuff there I, I took it in person because it was like a big suitcase full of stuff and I also wanted to chat to them and stuff um, but yeah they just had like imagine going into a, just a, a large room with just racks and they were just full of baskets and bins full of just broken parts and they were all like organized it was crazy it's the most broken shit i've ever seen in my life <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing and by the way we've had some people saying so Cheryl Lee has said um that you're responsible for both her first 35 mil and her first medium format camera um which leads you immediately on to sub-miniature. has got to be the next one there, Shirley. Um, so from you, Howard, you was running an analogue camera shop always in the plan? Was it something you stumbled into? Did it come from a passion of film or a passion for retail or a bit of both? I, well, I don't think any five-year-old child has ever gone to the teacher and they've said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And that I want to run an analogue camera shop. That'd be a bit weird. But um, <laughs> no, I, think, um, just, I just got into it. Um, I think I got a Nik I had a Nikon D40, it's my first camera, mm. and then the second camera after that was a Nikon FM, but I might know it was an FE, and then um, and then I had an Agfa Record 2, and then, I don't know, it just went on from there, and I just kept buying stuff, and then I got bored, and then I sold it, and then I bought something else, and then, I, and then eventually I had like a cupboard full of them, and then I thought, well, why don't I go to a camera fair and buy some more, and then... And then it got a bit out of hand. And, then, and now, now it's now look at this. I, just, I don't understand. I don't know how I'm here, to be honest. Yeah, Cause, I mean, that, that first part, up until the last sentence, I think we were all with you. Like, yeah, yeah, we've all been there. One camera, yeah, two cameras, yeah, cupboard. Yeah, going to a camera fair and deciding the, 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 the solution is more cameras. The jump from that to opening a retailer <laughs> is... Well, it, it just facilitates me buying more cameras constantly. Yeah. You know, like, satisfies that. <laughs> and so how, how many cameras that come in go like into this sort of side stream of Howard's personal cupboard collection for a month uh, or a year or yeah there's there's like a there's like a solid cupboard full of like stuff that's um I, I've got a bit more picky like recently mm. so this sounds really uh it sounds daft but you know like if a really nice Leica comes in or something I just don't care about it the weird thing <laughs> the weird the weird uh, so a minute fast. being painted in like a, a Russian caravan style yeah. or like the fake gold likers. Yeah, I'm keeping that. Um, yeah. But I don't. But I, like, and I've got some nice Nikon's and things. But um, no, like most most of it goes back in there. So. And and do you keep the stuff that's there in the shop, or do you do you not even risk it in case Mike sells it by accident? <laughs> like it goes home for cleaning and. I've got, I've got my own little drawer that's got like this is mine. <laughs> that's good we've had a question coming from uh, james in leeds i like that no one's ever done location before but this is a new thing 
Um, Howard, why do you always recommend the Yashica FXD as a brilliant all-round camera? Apparently, quote, <laughs> you always say so. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not a stitch up. My friend James, who is evangelical about the Yashica FXD, um, and it's not a bad camera by any stretch, but I wouldn't say I always recommend it all the time. <laughs> uh, he, he just really likes that. He's, um, he's a little bit on the spectrum, I think. <laughs> Does on the Yashica spectrum. <laughs> Every Yashica SLR I've ever seen, uh, the, 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 the cover on it is just this horrible, sticky, plastic mess. Do you... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah. bad feature, not a bug. You have to, you have to go on... Um, there's cameraleather.com, or there's Aki Azahai, or there's Hugo Studio. Those are, and there's, I think there's some other ones on eBay. I think there's one called Millie's Cameras. Uh, they do the, the leatherettes for all sorts of different cameras. They do... They do like laser cut or stamped out uh, leatherette coverings, and you can buy new, you can buy like lizards, snake skin, bright blue, whatever you want. I just go for the standard black one, but um, yeah, you, every pretty much every one of those that comes in, we have to replace the leatherette on because it's just not saleable otherwise, really. No, when you when you when you pick it up and it and it sort of sticks to your hand a little bit when you try to put it <laughs> <Yeah>. out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and when you um, when you said source cameras, so where do you do you have to go out and find one specifically? Do you just do people just send it to you spontaneously? Like, how do you get most of the cameras coming in these days? Well, we usually camp out outside, you know, like old ladies' houses and break in. No, yeah, um, no, no, legitimate business. <laughs> um, no, we, we we advertise to buy equipment, and we we always have like a lot of people that know us anyway, so. Um, you know, we, we do part exchange and um, we just we just advertise to buy equipment pretty much. And I think we've got to the point where um, a lot of people just know us and recommend us. I think word of mouth is particularly good um, because we, we, we do try and be really fair. I mean, I have some stories of some other camera shops that are not fair. Um, I'm not going to tell them. I'm not going to slag anyone off. But um, Have another beer. We'll do it at the end of the show. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'll get really pissed. I'm like, oh, but, uh, um, we 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 try and be as like as fair as possible, and I think that that really helps. In, and especially if someone's not dealt with you before, and they're not sure if they trust you, or you know, then they then they send you something, and you say, oh, that, we'll we'll, uh, we'll assess that at hundred quid, and they send you it, and you're like, oh, well, it's in the box, and it's mint. Okay, we'll give you like you know, a bit more, like hundred twenty five, and they just get absolutely buzzing. And, they tell their neighbour and their neighbour might have a camera and mm. they send it and then, yeah, so that, that helps quite a lot. And do you, do you find that the people selling you stuff know what it's worth at all? Or is it people who have literally like pulled something out of the cupboard and then like, I bought this in the 80s, I, I, I need some cash or some space? they yeah, both really. Um, it, it, just, it just varies. I think people always tend to know if, if there's something expensive, you mm. can usually tell. Um, you know, if you have to pick up something, it's like metal and it's got weight to it and it's it, it's it's impressive looking, then you probably generally know. But then there are some cameras that don't look like anything, like uh, the little Olympus MJU2 or mm. the uh, Chica T4 that are just plastic points and tubes. Um, and li literally, not hyperbole, you get like an old lady coming in with one and you're like, and, and for an MJU2, you're like, oh, good. That's a hundred quid, and they like almost fall over, and you're like, because they thought it was just charity shop yeah. fodder. Yeah. Uh, a pile of old uh, ladies outside this shop. Yeah. What was that? I see you got a pile of old ladies just stacked <laughs> up outside your shop. Drag them on there. Yeah. <laughs> stick it, stick hundred quid in their pocket, and send them home on the bus. Um, <laughs> and then, um, how frequently? Do you get, I think I know this because I've talked to you about it before, how frequently do you get people trying to sell you digital even though it is abundantly clear? <laughs> uh, so on the website, if you want to sell something, there's a form and in the text before the form, it says explicitly we do not sell digital equipment and then you fill out the form and then there's a little tick box that says we don't deal in digital equipment, just take this box. And then Canon 400D, Come on. <laughs> we just send them to Dale Photographic. So yeah. Fine. Oh, that's all right. So you've got a way out. I was about to say others. Yeah, like... yeah, we send them up to Dale. So it's Dale Photographic send us a uh, business when it's sort of maybe a bit mm. too niche for them. And we send people that want digital stuff up to them. There's a bit of crossover, but it, yeah. it'll help.
No, that's perfect. So that would be quite funny if everyone now just sends you a digital camera being like, can you convert this to film, please? I want it large format. <laughs> no, they will, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, quite happily, quite happily. And then um, one of the things I think we've all... I think one of the things definitely that we've all appreciate from what you do, and again, like saying this personally, because as I say, I, I, I have bought camera and lens from you, is that knowledge that it's been through the hands of somebody who knows something about cameras. Somebody who might have either serviced it or at least said it's okay. No, not you, Adam. Um, <laughs> uh, and, um, and that's the difference versus the Ebays of the world. And I saw actually on your Instagram, you have like a PSA that's like, um, if you've bought from eBay or Depop, I mean, am I showing my age? I have no idea what Depop is. Graham? What's Depop? Really like? And why do people who buy cameras from there have problems? I think it's some sort of clothing brand. No, it's not. It's like, it's a, it's a I don't know, it's, um, as I, I don't actually use it, to be honest, but as, uh, I think Depop, it's, um, it's a platform and it's quite fashionable. I think a lot of clothes are sold on there. And I'm sure there are some great sellers on there, hmm. but I do find that a lot of camera stuff tends to be overpriced, they tend to be little point and shoots, and they tend to be stuff that we might sell it for a tenner with batteries in them, and, mm. or whatever, and they, you know, they're just plastic point and shoots, and you know, the cheap ones, and they'll be like 40, 50 quid on there, and I just think, why? Mm. Um, so do you get people coming into the shop being like, I bought this from eBay or whatever, yeah. and it's not working, help Obviously me? not, but li literally we get people coming in saying, I bought this from someone else, and it doesn't work, like, can you help me? Um, and sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. But um, you, like, if, if it's broken, my my advice usually is just like send it back. And if they have any problems, or if they don't believe you, just tell them that you talk to us, and um, and we've looked at it and we've confirmed that it is knackered. So yeah, because that's the really frustrating thing of um, of this. I think for all of us who have ever gone on eBay and and you know you might be looking for the camera of your dreams and it's there. And it, the, the, you know, the listing's a bit vague, maybe, or whatever, and you, you feel like it's worth a risk, even if it's a bit of money. Um, that must be like, for you, it's like a, a main competitor, like eBay. And you're saying, well, hang on a minute, you can come to us. We might not have everything straight away, but fair price and the fact that it's actually... Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, d like I say, don't get us wrong. There's, 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 there's definitely some fair people on eBay, and there's some, there's some decent dealers on there, and... Um, but yeah, you, 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 it, I think there's people that just are a bit chancy as well, and they just try and put something up. I mean, to be fair, we get broken stuff in. We, we sell stuff. It, a week later, they go. The customer says, "Oh, I got this. I put film for it. it doesn't work." Um, and we sort it out. So you know, it, we are dealing with old equipment. Yeah. So you can help it sometimes, but um, yeah, I always, I always feel like eBay is a bit of a gamble whereas if you come to a proper shop it's a bit more of like a safe bet and yeah, yeah i guess you might, you might get lucky on ebay and pay less but um it's you, you take your risk don't you yeah. no it's interesting because obviously like um for me in selling film it's not quite the same but there, there's definitely like uh stuff there that, that resonates like because i have people who are like I've, I've seen this pack of portrait on ebay for 20 quid and i'm like well i mean great if it's fresh has been stored well that's a deal like take it that's better than trade prices but <laughs> the odds of it being that and uh, not being expired or not having sat in the sun you, you just won't know until you try and process it by which point you know your photos have gone on that so it's just interesting hearing that that from your side as well it's it's still you know, yeah, it's just, how, how have you found demand in the last couple of months it's been weird because i basically planned for um everything to disappear like literally we spent um me and my business partner um who's also my mum spent two, <laughs> spent two days we sat there and we spent two days being like how long could we survive if income drops to zero and and all of that kind of stuff because you know um the when you hear when basically people shoot film tend to shoot film most when they go on holiday when they see friends and they go away with family um, and when they feel pretty comfortable spending money on what is a luxury over and above uh, rent and food, and all four of those things was 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 disappeared overnight. Actually, we've we found it's been okay. I think because um, now again, I'm very lucky. We're we're online, so if physical stops close and we can still fulfil, I know that I'm luckier than um, than some others. So that's a bit of a help. But also, I think pe there are there are people, and again, <laughs> there's a lot of them in the comments probably who have taken the opportunity of like. They might not have a lot of time or a lot of money, but what they do, they'd rather spend on something that they enjoy and is fun. Um, so people who are into film are going to shoot maybe a bit more 
whether it's a lockdown project or whether it's just having a bit of fun or trying something new. Um, but I think the the sort of the people who are who shoot film on holiday or are picking it up as something trendy to try, probably that's a bit less. And I'm also anticipating a drop. If we don't have summer holidays, like summer holidays abroad, that's when people buy like slide film and they go to Portugal and shoot loads of it. You know, they're off to their dream advent, uh, you know, dream holiday in Thailand. They want the best films for it. That's where I think we're going to see real pain. But one day at a time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. I mean, at least you, at least you've not had to completely get wiped out. But um, I think, yeah, probably future demand might slow down a little bit compared to maybe like this time last year or something. But everyone's in the same boat, right? So. Yeah, exactly. And also, like the it's the uncertainty that's really killing me. It's like every week you like. You know, the rules on how we ran the warehouse, the rules on how people could come in. Like, um, people who work for us in the warehouse who have kids, whose who spouses have jobs. Every time there's any announcement or even a rumour, everyone's reassessing what they can and can't do. <laughs> that's the thing that's exhausting. Like, a couple of weeks ago, I was like, it's shit, but at least it's steady for a bit. And then, of course, things change. We can go to Durham for free, so that's fine. Um, so, um, let's have a quick check. Um, Let's have a look. So people are, uh, uh, yeah, still writing in a lot about then their eBay experiences. I think people have, <laughs> fungus seems to come up fairly regularly. Uh, do you have a cure-all for fungus? Um, no, um. <laughs> <laughs> Buy your lenses from West Yorkshire cameras, which never have fungus, right? No, no, loads of them still have fungus. We, we literally, uh, me and Adam's been, um, because we, we got to we got to zero on the parcels today, so um, we we spent some time going through all our like uh, broken stuff, for lack of a better word, or like faulty stuff. And a lot of the lenses had fungus in it, and we were just seeing if we could clean them. But it happens a lot. Um, I think people that don't really know, especially like private sellers that don't know that's a thing, they're not going to look for it. They might not necessarily know. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Mm. Um, so yeah, but. Uh, and it is a weird thing to explain to someone if you don't know about cameras and you're like, yeah, yeah, fungus could grow inside the lens. You're like, what? <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a really strange... Concept. On the glass. Oh, yeah, yeah, on the glass, sure. But, yeah, and then, then people are like, but it's sealed up. How does it get in there? I'm like, I don't know. Um, but it's, um, yeah, it's, it is a strange, it is a strange like phenomenon. But the, the, the best way to, to get rid of it is just to take the lens apart and clean it. So even if you get a lens and it's got it in it, it's not the end of the world, but... Um, yeah, you, you can sort it out, but it's not always possible if it's a fairly complex zoom lens, like, a, I don't know, like a Canon 17 to 40 or something. Mm. And if you get focused, like, right in the middle of that, it's like, oh, it's a big job. So. Yeah. And do you do a lot of the repairs in-house, or do you have a few people that you sort of send off to and get stuff back from? Well, it depends what it is, and it depends how much time we have. So, like, yeah, manual lenses and things with individual elements, we can take those apart and clean them or um, I could fix the trip 35 today because the aperture was janky because they all are mm. um, <laughs> yeah and then but then if there's anything a bit more involved um, oh I was I was hitting a Pentax 6-7 with a hammer yesterday that was fun <laughs> um, <laughs> I, di I didn't fix it um, <laughs> weird that weird um, okay, at the end no. of it it had fungus on the lens and it had been hit by a hammer well never mind <laughs> Um, no, we, we, we send anything a bit more complicated or maybe a bit more electronic. We send that to Piero, PPP. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everybody knows him at the moment. Um, and um, there's a few others. Aperture in London are mm. quite good. They're very good because they're not the cheapest, but um, Critton does a great job. And he does it, the, the turnaround is quick. So you can send him a Leica to get serviced and it's, it's back with you in like a week. Mm. I've, there's 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 um there's some other places. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a minute early. You need to adjust that. That was that was that was that was uh, someone telling me not to mention the places. I think. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's there's some places who uh, there's a there's a place that I sent a Bronica lens to. It's a Bronica ETR shift lens, um, which is quite unusual. The shutter didn't quite work properly when I got it. This was over two years ago. And every now and again, I chase them up and I say, hey, when am I getting my Bronica lens back? And they just thought, <laughs> oh, yeah, we're, we're working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> we're 
wizard. I don't, um, I don't know what the invoice is for two years of constant repair on something. Zero, let me I sell would it. like to know who the repairer is so I never send anything there. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. All right, then. So probably we'll do one last question before um, before we hand over to Graham um, and his fun. And I'm going to actually pull up a separate thing. So this came in from Ben Mills. I haven't seen him pop in yet, but I think it's important. So can you confirm or deny that you are, in fact, Ryan Axe? The chap who looks entirely like you. That... I, I can, I, yeah, I mean, we might be long lost brothers, but apparently, like, this. yeah, I've never seen this person before, but they look... I thought you, I thought I genuinely, you sent me this picture and I thought you face swapped me onto someone else. <laughs> <laughs> it was literally the first question that came in, like Ben sent it within two minutes being like, can you ask Howard why he looks identical to my friend Ryan Axe? And I was like, uh, that's a weird question, but sure. And then he sent me the photo. I was like, oh, okay, no, that makes absolute sense. I will ask him. <laughs> okay. I was going to ask, is Ryan Axe some sort of pop star that I don't know about? But it's just one of Ben's friends, is it? It's one of Ben's friends. He, he sent me his IMDB page, which I was like, oh, shit, maybe it's a famous actor. Um, and then all that's on the, the page is, is this photo. Um, I'm not having a go at him. Like, still more IMDb pages than, than I have, but um, there we go. Anyway, what even after all of this? And I know you would think. All right then. So, Graham, do you have your velvet jacket? I do, but it's so. Oh, you know what? I'll put it on. Know, take, listen, I'll I'll go get this up yes, go get your velvet jacket as well, Howard. This is important. Oh, yeah, yeah, velvet jackets. Oh. Go on. All right. <laughs> this is great. We've got dueling velvet jackets. I, oh, once more, once again, I have been entirely outdressed. It's not hard. You wearing? Where's that scubby t-shirt you're wearing tonight from? Some brilliant, brilliant shop. <laughs> but I, as I said before, I went on. I did actually mean to change it before I came on because it's got strawberry jam up here. It's got dried apricot over there, and um... oh. oh, look at this! Here we go. All right. All right then, I will fade subtly. I've got a fancy pin. F say, fade subtly into the background. Graham, over to you for how well do you know West Yorkshire cameras? Um, yeah, so, okay. I, admittedly, some of these questions not directly pertinent to West Yorkshire cameras because what happened was I typed in West Yorkshire facts and hit go and didn't realise I'd missed the word cameras until towards the end of it. So some of these are more West Yorkshire facts, but, yeah, not all of them. Um, an easy one to start with for you here, Howard. Which of uh, your fellow West Yorkshire cameras team enjoys a glass of the awful drink Bailey's? <laughs> That's definitely Adam. <laughs> he was What's completely wrong with him? Out of Bailey's, and I thought to myself, <laughs> "Good." <laughs> <laughs> even even in this heat wave, he's drinking Bailey's. Oh God, that's that's horrific. Okay. Uh, this is a more of a Yorkshire-based question. Let's test you. I, my understanding is that Yorkshiremen are very proud of where they are, so I'm hoping you're going to get all these right. Um, West Yorkshire Cameras, uh, according to your website, opened its doors or its uh, stalls in 2012. Uh, when did West Yorkshire itself come into existence? Oh, um, I mean, it's, it's God's own country. So, I mean, when did God... <laughs> Existence, I think is the, the real answer to that question, but I genuinely have no clue. I'm just going to take an absolute stab in the dark and say like 1350. No idea. <laughs> I mean, you're close. You're really close. It was actually 1974 for West what? Yorkshire. <laughs> so your West Johnny York. come, <laughs> your Johnny come lately county is a yeah a little bit newer than you realise. Okay, um, all right, more of a, a more of a West Yorkshire cameras question here, uh, and I may, this may be wrong, but I spent quite a lot of time looking, so hopefully it's right. What's the most expensive camera on your website at the moment? And also, supplementary question: What kind of discount will you give me on it? Now we're basically best buds. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. When did you when did you look this? Was this today? Oh, like literally twenty minutes ago. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, probably the Hasselblad Super Wide. Yeah, uh, that's okay. So, how much is that camera? Uh, it's like, um, it's the, it's the, is it the nine, nine? I can't remember what the number of it is, but it's yeah, it's expensive. I, uh, I reckon it's like, 
Oh, it's like two seven fifty, something like that. Oh yeah, deal, deal. Let's shake hands. We'll say yes. That's <laughs> it's actually three thousand nine hundred ninety-nine pounds. Bit of a discount on that one. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, that is the um, the Hasselblad Super Wide nine oh five SWC. A lot of the stuff you have on there is um, high end stuff. Like you don't have a lot of just bog standard cams. Is that a fairly deliberate decision? Do you have more stuff no, in the shop? No, that's... No. Types of tap, it's great. Yes. <laughs> we, no, I, I, honestly, I think the the main the main sort of thing that we we tend to sell is sub a hundred pounds like SLR for mm -hmm. most people. I, I no, it's not a deliberate thing at all. It's just some things are worth more than others. Um, I think I the, the the more expensive ones tend to hang around longer in general. Mm. Not always. But, so maybe that's why it looks like there's more expensive stuff. I mean, generally, I think we're fairly well priced. So if we if we put like a, an ME Super up, or if we put a Canon AE One up, um, people just tend to snap them up. Um, so uh, maybe maybe yeah, it looks like we've just got expensive high end stuff. But no, we we sell everything like um, from from like point and shoots to I guess a Hasselblad Super Wide. But um, yeah. No I, no, I actually really enjoy stocking the cheaper things because I feel like it, it, it enables people with any budget just to get into photography because you can you can literally buy you can literally buy a Zen 80M with a with a with like a Helios lens and I think we sell them for like thirty quid or something. And Why? Why are you doing that? Stop it. No, like, <laughs> like, you, you should. Take, They're bloody crap. It's all it's all a scam. That'll take just as good pictures as like a Leica M6. Like, to any casual observer, the photo is it's going like to be identical, right? Your, yeah, but using it, it's like punching yourself in the eyes, Howard. What's going on here? No, actually, you get a good one. I've got a good one on my <laughs> home. To be fair, it's on like your condition. shelf. On uh, your shelf, Howard. Oh, that's my case. <laughs> no further questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one's less of a camera-based question. Um, uh, Leeds, where you're obviously based now, has provided the world with many uh, famous and important people from sort of J.R.R.R. -R -R Talkers, I'm never sure many R's are in that, to Mel B from the Spice Girls. Um, but perhaps most importantly of all, which hometown, <laughs> this one's quite personal to me, which hometown hero played the role of the master in the greatest television series of all time? What? <laughs> <laughs> which actor, this is very easy, which Leeds-born actor, born and bred actor, played the role of the master in the greatest TV series of all time? I have no idea. Oh, okay, I'm going to narrow it down. I, I, I regret it. The greatest TV series of all time is Doctor Who. That should help. The Master? The Master, yeah. I, I've clearly not watched enough Doctor Who. I know Daleks, and that's about it. <laughs> okay, well, the answer is that's John Sims. You know who John Sims is? No idea. Shame on you. Shame on you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, is this our final question? I think this is our final question. Um, okay, I did this to uh, Dan Rubin last week. So this is an Instagram feed based question here. Um, your second, not your first ever picture of a camera on Instagram, your second ever picture of cameras on Instagram featured two folding cameras. One of them was a Boldix. What was the name of the other folding camera? A badge. Yes! <laughs> have you have you used your badge much? Uh, I can't claim to. I sold it a long time ago. I think I rented it out actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's had it's had some hard use. I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> so that was an incredible. For questions actually about West Yorkshire cameras, three out of three. <laughs> <laughs> for random questions nothing to do with the shop zero uh, but i can't see what any correlation are you? that doesn't that doesn't actually help us understand that more no that's excellent well done great <laughs> that, is, that is brilliant scores well done that puts you i think probably in the top uh, half of people who have um, 
who have done any answers. Um, I've got a few more questions, but um, before I crack on, Graham, is there anything um, that's burning on your mind apart from several follow-ups about the Leica um, showdown? Uh, not really, no, I mean, because like I said, my, 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 the one thing I really wondered was, because uh, the stuff you have on there does seem like it's really well curated. You've got a lot of really nice cameras on there. Hang on a sec, um, what, what, while you talk, this sounds like a question where I'm going to try and use screen share. I've not done this before. My history with doing technical things well the first time is um, terrible. So let's have a look. All right, hopefully people can see West Yorkshire Cameras website, Howard in the Corner, and hear us talk. All right, carry on. What were you saying? So, so yes, yeah, so like the, the, the stuff you've got on there looks really well curated. You, you like the, the camera that you've got on there at the moment. I was most lusting after is you've got a Linhof Techno Pan, which looks fabulous. Um, but you, you've got quite a lot of interesting stuff and um, things like the Alpa. Do you are you seeking stuff out because? Um, you're really interested in it. I mean, I know when I worked in retail before, I'd buy things because I would go, oh, I want that, and then sell it on. Is it the same for you, or is it this is just what's come in? Um, well, I, it's, obviously, it's obviously what comes in, but, yeah, it's it's certainly a lot more um, exciting to, to get unusual, interesting things in that I sort of really enjoy, um, to, to, I guess, having the hand. I um, don't really know how to ex explain that, but... Um, I mean, it is literally what comes in, and we, we do have some say of what we're going to buy or not, but generally, if somebody offers us something decent, we want it because, well, it's good stock. Um, but, yeah, I, I guess we, we don't... There, are, there is a limit. Like, we, there is, if something's in very poor condition or if something's just not worth bothering with, or, you know, we, we obviously don't stock it, but... Um, I think what I was saying before, the more, I guess, uh, normal stuff, you know, like the SLRs, they, they tend to sell. Um, so I guess you don't see those, but then the, the more niche stuff um, that sticks around, like uh, I thought you were going to ask something along these lines. I've got like a really nice Contaflex just down there, which is, I've wanted one in for ages. And I was really excited when we finally got one in. It's like a 35 mil twin lens. Um, by contacts and it's just really tricky and it's really ornate and it's just really lovely. Do you have um, it there to show us? I can. Yeah, yeah. All right, you're now well full screen, so you have the screen to show off the real. Oh, look at that! The really, really nice TLR, but it's one of the few that you can actually change lenses on, and it's got a really nice sort of bright, uh, reflective viewfinder thing. If you do that, or selfie you mirror, selfie mirror. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can but, um, yeah, no, this is beautiful. I love, I really, really love this. Uh, this. So stuff like that does come in. And I really was sorely tempted to keep this, but I just know that I'm not going to use it personally. Like, it'll just sit on my shelf, which is just a waste. Um, but we had, um, about a year ago, somebody sold me um, one of the most interesting things I've had in for a long time. Um, it was uh, an Erneman, uh, Ermanox might not have heard of it because it's a bit of a strange one but it's essentially um medium format it's six by nine it was actually plates but there's a six by nine back with it um and it's just one massive lens and it's it's um 12.5 centimeter f 1.8 and it's from about the 1930s and it's got a focal plane shot in it and it's just the most amazing camera and that i was i was absolutely determined to use that before i sold it um and that's in my drawer at home. And <laughs> once I'm bored of it, I will be selling it, but not until then. Given that you've got a Zenit on your shelf, and you've said you know you'd sell somebody a Zenit EM, I'm trying to imagine what is the like what is too bad for you to have and to sell. What it, what is not good enough for you to sell in the shop if a Zenit is okay? What is not good enough? Uh, yeah. Like some of have you ever seen those really janky? Um, like almost like they're fake cameras, like they're called like <laughs> Olympia or like uh, Canon, and it's like a big plastic weird thing with it. Because sometimes you get off of those, and people seem to think they're worth something because they kind of look like a proper camera, but it's basically just a big plastic point, like not even point and shoot. It's almost like it's just a bit of a scam because it says something close to Nikon or Olympus or Canon as the yeah. nameplate, and it from and you squint. 
and look from like 20 meters away, it looks like a decent camera, but it's just. <laughs> 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 Somewhere around here, I've got a lump of lead from the heart of one of those where I smashed it to pieces, <laughs> which is the best use for them. Oh, yeah, I think they put, I think they genuinely put like a bit of metal in there to make mm. them feel heavier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's all. We tend not to bother with um, lomography cameras either because they can be rather hit and miss. Uh, to, to be nice, but um, yeah, I'm very nice. <laughs> We don't bother with any trash carbon fiber large format. It's just junk like that. Oh, <laughs> no <laughs> this time. Whoa, and as if that was a seamless transition. Do you have anything to talk about, actually, Graham? Okay, yeah, I want to because this is this is my new toy, my new. But can you all see right. this all right? We, this... Well, we've just made you full screen, so um, me and Howard okay. can just go off for a quick micro nap while you talk for a bit. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to mention this quickly because I got this this last week, and it's not very often you get to talk about a new camera. Um, and this is my brand new. It's we can we can't built... see we can't see it quite. It's just below the frame. Okay, so if you lift okay, up well, a little bit. On, let me just... okay, there, there we go. go. I'll lift up. Is that better? So this is my um, Chroma Carbon Adventurer, um, made by Steve Lloyd at Chroma, Chroma Cameras, and um, and I love it. It's a fabulous camera, and I just wanted to give it a shout out. It's really nice. I was looking for something. I mean, we've talked in the past. You've all seen Ronald and um, Am I Intrepid? And I was looking for something that was a step up in terms of functionality from the Intrepid, um, but was still nice and lightweight, which this is, and um, it's lovely. And, uh, and I was going to whip the lens out here. So much of this stuff is magnets, so. It all comes apart so quickly. What I love about this is it's it up a, a bit, Graham. We're just missing the we're just missing the magic there. There we go. Okay, right. Let me just do this because it's it's such a beautifully engineered thing. Uh, that da that da that. Let me just do this because it's so cool. Look at this. It just uh, blah, 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 and it just folds down. You do that. Do that. And if you've got a small lens on it, you can even keep the lens on. And there you go, it just goes in your back like that. And it has so many movements and stuff. It's lovely. I, and also mine, because mine's special. Then you can see that. Number one, baby. Can you see that? Carbon Adventure number one, because mine was the first one. Nice. <laughs> That's I made Steve, I made Steve do that. Um, yeah, they're lovely. Chroma cameras are fantastic, and I'm just super pleased with it. I want to give a shout, because it's not very often you get to buy new, new toys. So, um, yeah, if you're looking for large format stuff, definitely worth checking out um i'm going to do on sunny 16 i'm going to do um a sort of camera specific uh show at some point to talk about it but that'll be a when i get around to it kind of job but yeah no no, no that, cool. was, that was a helpful fast look so howard how much would you buy that for i mean considering it's made of carbon fiber Cut um, a carbon fiber yeah, yeah, I mean, it's really like, fast uh, uh, something like a wister or a shen hao uh, maybe not so much a Shen Hao, but like a nice wi or an ebony. They go for silly money, like a thousand quid for the body. I mean, yeah. So, Graham, did you spend about a thousand quid? I buy one personally, but I, that's got to be expensive, right? Uh, you would think so, but no, these are currently retailing for 500 pounds, which is definitely less money than they should be um, <laughs> because they have an incredible range of movements. Um, Steve is a wonderful camera maker, a terrible businessman. Take advantage of this whilst you can, because at some point, he'll cotton onto this. Well, as we said before, like you are the great friend who you saw, you saw this product, you, saw, you spoke to Steve, and you said, Steve, that is, yeah, that is a brilliant camera. The price is, is, is just right. I'll buy one. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair. It's a fair exactly. price for what it is, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. No, thank you. And and you were saying like um so you've now got three large formats. you so you're giving Howard shit for the number of cameras. But so you're now saying you've got how likely is it you'll ever take three out for a jaunt at once? You just never know. I mean, admittedly Ronald's not likely to go for many walks, but I mean you might I'm trying to think of a situation where you might need two four by five cameras on the go, but you know the Intrepid and the Chrome are so light. Stereo. You know you could easily take them both. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Stereo. You do black and white on both, and then you do the green and the reds when you're. Yeah, exactly. It would work brilliantly. Three D <laughs> large format. And yeah. well, I'm, it's strange that you're giving Ronald a hard time because Ronald is the kind of camera that matches the, the the sort of the the result of the Chroma with the weight of a small elephant. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. We're not that small, but yes. <laughs> Brilliant. All right then, so um, Howard, 
what is in your personal camera cupboard? In particular, what has what has survived the years? What are the ones that genuinely, when you're out and about on okay. a little bit more, you pull out? Um, I actually just wanted to give Adam a quick shout out. Okay. Um, while talking about large format, um, because you said three large format is 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 not enough. Too many. I think I don't know how. I, I think Adam has genuinely lost count how many large format. <laughs> cameras. <laughs> large format that's weird and like slightly broken comes in. Adam's like, yeah, I, I'll have that. I'll, I've got a use for that. That's fine. Um, so is, is I, it... I, Adam, Adam's, I genuinely, Adam's Instagram is fantastic. You should, you should have a look. Yeah. Um, yeah. But did, what does, does he like Adam, do projects Adam. with them as in largers or literally he's building a house out of large format cameras? Oh, I, I, I think he's just got a bit of a compulsion, to be honest. I, I don't understand it. Yeah. Um, oh right, so it's but, mental illness. Oh, that's okay then. That's fine. Adam, but, yeah, get, get on Adam's level, then we'll talk. Anyway. Oh, I'm assuming. Uh, yeah. I'm assuming. Is this Adam French? Is that his name? Yes. Yes. He's saying he is sitting next to a Grayflex at the time. A Graflex. I read that as Gravelax at the start, which definitely isn't right. But... <laughs> he hasn't got one of these. I can tell you that he's not. So Adam, you need to step your game up, my son. Adam's Instagram feed is mugged up in there. So yes, he's, he's confirmed he is building a house out of them, which is lovely. And he, he said he sat next to it as though he's like watching TV, like with the arm round. Yeah. yeah. Like friends. Oh, that's nice. So it's like, it's like a companion as well as a camera. So that's lovely. Um, <laughs> all right then. Yeah. Anyway, so, so I'm assuming you're not in the same, you can never have too many large format cameras in your no. lorry approach. Uh, I think, I, I, I think uh, touch wood, maybe I, I yeah. Uh, maybe I've got over the gas thing a bit um, because I, I think, like I said before, I tend not to. It were really nice cameras come in, but unless it's weird and interesting to me, I, I just don't care. But um, I don't care about Leica M6. Just saying, sorry. Um, no, it's fine. We um, we were joking with Hamish a couple of weeks ago that like the perfect clickbait article would be like um, six reasons why you hate the M6. Number three will shock you. Um, <laughs> Now we found the perfect author to write this. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll slag off the Mamiya 7 as well. Then just drag and drag. Uh, yeah. Um, anyway, um, I think the things that I've got, so I've got a Leica M3, but I hardly ever pick that up, which is really sad. I picked it up for the first time in about 18 months, uh, about two weeks ago. Um, and it's nice. I'm just a bit meh about it. Um, I've got Nikon F. Which is a lovely camera. Uh, got an Nikon F2. Um, got well, the main the main thing that I always take with me anywhere I go is probably the Hasselblad. Mm -hmm. Really, I just like the best camera. That's for me personally. That is the best camera. And and is that like for pottering about the moors? But also, if you're going on holiday, would are you the kind of person who takes five cameras, three film formats, black and white and colour to see what happens? Or are you like okay? What do, what, no, do you, what do you take? I, so you're you're going to what's your what's like your photographic destination holiday thing? Um, I you... guess destination. I guess um, nice landscapes and stuff, or nice. I don't know. Just all right. Well, nice. let's say uh, what's a common like Iceland. Uh, oh, I've been, I've been, yeah, I've been to Iceland. You, it's not possible to go to Iceland and take a bad photo. I could give my mum a camera and, could, I, and put a photo, and she'd take a photo, and you'd be like, wow, that's a nice photo. <laughs> On, Next mom. week, Howard's mum shows off her Iceland <laughs> photos. Um, all right then, so you're going to Iceland. So what camera and film do you take? Uh, just a Hasselblad and some Delta 400s, and that's pretty much it. Because I find if you carry more than one camera with you, you inevitably something presents itself to you, and you think, oh, well, I could take it on this one, or I could take it on that one, but with that lens. Or, but if I really, really want to take it, I can get my tripod out and use my large format. Um, but then, but then I'd need to take my holes with me, and then I'd need to take. The, but then, what if I just want to walk around with a point and shoot? Because then I don't have to do all that stuff. No, I just you just take one camera mm -hmm. and maybe two lenses, like a normal and a wide angle, and you take one kind of film. Or if you really, really bother black and white and color, um, otherwise you just I just don't see the point. Like feel like your photographic vision mm. should be like 
you should have got to the point where you think this is what I like and this is how I'm going to see the world and this is how I'm going to take the photos and then you kind of have a bit of a uh, style and if, mm. if, you, if, you, if you end up with too much choice and too much going on you, you dilute that style I think maybe. No, I think that's fair. Like, I, I hear a lot of people who have spent a lot of time doing film photography and, and generally it comes... Uh, you, you tend to hear people either say maybe they'll have the same camera and lens, one black and white, one colour, because we all know some photos just, you know, work in one, and they'll use whatever's right, or the same film, same camera, two lenses, because there's, you know, some stuff that you need to be closer at. But yeah, you're right, that whole knowing when to start to restrict your choices. But I think the other interesting thing, and again, I talk to a lot of people who are starting out on the film, my advice is, is, is often like, learn with something that's a bit reliable, then try a load of stuff before you try and get down to that. Because I think people like come to it and are like, I want to be a really good black and white photographer. And you're like, great, how much have you done? And they're like, nothing yet. And you're like, cool, how do you know you won't really enjoy Colour Plus? <laughs> and that will be where you end up taking your best photos. So I'm assuming you've taken a lot of photos to getting down to that combination. Oh, so much trash. Oh, just <laughs> unbelievable amounts of rubbish. I, I've wasted so much money in film on just point. You know, you, do you ever like get a film back and you're just like, why did I take that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. or, or more commonly, that's I'll get eight rolls of film back and I'll be like, I regret six. <laughs> So yeah, no, no, I do, I do, I do. I think, yeah, you, 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 I think ideally you want to get to a point where you're like, this is my style, this is what I like, hmm. this is how I take the pictures that uh, I enjoy the most. But yeah, you need to try stuff, and that's, that's, yeah, you, you sell all different kinds of film. I sell all different kinds of cameras, so there's different cameras and different film for different hmm. situations or different styles. But once you figure it out, what works for you, I think. You just should just stick with a thing. And it's, it's great to experiment every now and again. But if you have a, it depends what you're doing it for as mm. well. Like if you're doing it for art and um, to express yourself, I think you do need to figure out what you like. But if, you, if you're just taking nice family photos, yeah, whatever. It's like point and shoot, yeah. zen it, whatever. <laughs> zen it and red scale, go for it. <laughs> have a great time. Red scale yeah. is all right. Do not put red scale in the same basket as a zen it. I will not stand for that. <laughs> so when when people come in um, and they're like, right, um, I'm a total beginner to analog, um, not really known photography. Do you guide them towards a certain camera or type of camera, or do you not? So get a Leica M6 with a summer looks, and um, <laughs> <laughs> that'll be three grand. Please. <laughs> no, um, yeah, no. We actually, me and Mike, just written uh, an article on the website about this. Because um, it's something we get asked a lot, so again, oh, I think I saw that. Actually, let me try and find it. Yeah, with being closed, we've we've had time to do that sort of thing. Um, so here we go. Yeah, the, the conclusion of that article or the sort of recommendation, at least, was um, yeah, like a, an SLR with some sort of metering or some sort of automatic and manual, uh, like a Canon AE one. Or um, uh, Yashica FXT, <laughs> or um, just yeah, Pentax ME Super or something. Because uh, I feel like, as if you're a total beginner, you in, in in your head, I guess that's the sort of thing that is a camera, and then you can see exactly the picture that will be taken, and that helps quite a lot. Um, I think rangefinders tend to confuse people a little bit. Mm. I think rangefinders tend to, to be for someone that's a little bit more into it. That, has a bit more experience because it can be a bit hard to get your head around that if you've never picked up a camera before. Yeah. Um, and then obviously point and shoots are great for beginners, but they don't offer you really any creative control. So yeah, we I think the sort of general recommendation is reasonable SLR with maybe an auto and manual mode. Yeah. No, that makes sense. I just pulled it up actually there as we were doing it. And yeah, I think your, your closing sentence is along the lines of um, it's more about you than the equipment. Now the little men are going to come out. <laughs> and they do a little Yorkshire, Yorkshire chant, and then they go back. <laughs> like, there's a really racist one at the end, so I probably won't show you that. Bye <laughs> <laughs> bye. 90 something, it's, it's pretty old. Um, it was from 
yeah, it's, it's, the, the last one is a bit, a bit much, to be honest. But, yeah. <laughs> well, <they can't. laughs> no, 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 I think that's really fair. I think I was... <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> Fine, we'll all just... <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh can you see that oh yeah yeah no that's lovely wow they're, they're coming out they're saluting someone's playing golf no just rotating someone's playing golf <laughs> well hang on a minute I, I laughed but then someone's gone oh well i hope it's an or and then yes a slightly racist last one. Oh, that's nice So, uh, yeah, enjoy that, but uh, <laughs> I'll, let me just try and figure out this janky, janky thing I've got. No, that was, that was lovely. It's been a while since I um, was treated to a racist clock. I'm genuinely surprised my iPad has not fallen off uh, this tripod. It's oh, that's brilliant. It with cable ties, so, uh, yeah. No, there we go. So, so I was just putting it up, and I said the ending line is, it's more about you than the equipment. Exactly, exactly. Which is perfect. Okay then. No, 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 that's perfect. Well, I think we're um, we're up to the hour. Um, do you have a favourite? So we'll we'll do a last couple of questions and then we'll um, we'll release you to your your evening entertainment. And um, one thing that I was going to ask was so you've as we've heard in the quiz you've been open for eight years, ish coming up to eight years somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So a bit longer than West Yorkshire, a lot longer than Yorkshire, and. Um, what have you have you noticed something any changes in the last eight years in terms of like who's buying cameras who's selling cameras the general interest in it um well i mean certainly the 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 main the main uh change i think is prices for some stuff have just gone through the roof um and i think a lot of that is is um the community i think well in a sense, I guess demand has definitely gone up um, because the supply of all these cameras are finite because they're not being made anymore and some are breaking. So if anything, the supply is maybe slightly going down. Um, the demand seems to have increased and for some things especially, that's true. Um, some things have reached a bit of a cult status, like it has a lot of ex-pan. Um, I mean, I think when we started, they were literally like, Four, five, six hundred pounds. Now it's like four times that. Come on, it's ridiculous. Um, and yeah, like REM sixes. But there's some things that have always been um, expensive because they're collectible. Mm. Um, I think I think definitely there's been um, an increase in um, I guess a younger audience because mm. you have all those sort of um, like older customers that have been shooting film because that's what the brother was when they started taking photos in 1972 um but i think yeah now with the internet and people discussing things on reddit and making memes and stuff and youtube um there's there's been a lot of more interest from younger people and then they sort of like to hype up particular hmm. models of um, yeah, there's like bubbles that can create around a certain camera or model and it just... Oh, like, yeah, 100%. Um, but I, no, I think it's, uh, people ask me this question fairly regularly and it's, you know, like, what's your, who, who's your general customer? And it's like, well, there isn't, it sounds, it sounds really crap, but it kind of isn't because it's, it's older people and younger people and people with a big budget and people with a small budget mm. and it's male and female. Just uh, literally, if you, it, it's just... The, the sort of there is no sort of specific market for mm. people interested in photography. It's 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 anyone can be really. Um, well, that's interesting because that's one of the things that like the whole smartphone thing has been is that everyone talks about everyone's a photographer now, and that applies, I suppose, backwards. Then saying, well, if everyone's a photographer, then everyone, you know, regardless of age, demographic, whatever, a certain percentage of them will be interested in going back and finding out what photography was before or, or, or a different type yeah. of photography. Yeah, that's, that's an excellent point, actually. Uh, um, Alistair's written in and said, do you think there's a resurgence of medium format in particular? So prices seem to be going up in eBay. Is, is it that people who are then into film transition up from 35mm or anything in that, like the formats? 
Uh, yeah, I'd probably say that's that's accurate. Um, yeah, definitely in the last year or two, the prices have gone up quite a bit. Um, it's, it's always quite difficult keeping up, to be honest, um, mm. because pretty much every every other week we're like checking, we're like, oh, what do Bronicas go for now? And it just it just changes. I mean, some some stuff goes down as well, but um, what's gone down recently? Because you, you're right, you don't often hear that. Um, probably. Or well, maybe at least like flattened out, I guess. Um, I don't know. Maybe stuff hasn't gone down. <laughs> APS. Uh, APS uh, has gone down. Oh yeah. Well, that's just a, that's just a dead format. But I think maybe one ten and things. You know, sort of like the the less. I think the the the, fo- the, the, em- the focus. That's a bad pun. <laughs> to be on on quality. I think people want higher quality. So I think a lot of people do shoot thirty five mil. And then maybe um, they develop it themselves or they develop it cheaply and scan it cheaply because I would probably say most people scan. Mm. Um, and then maybe they're disappointed with the results from 35, so they want to move up to medium format. I don't know. Yeah. And do you, and do, you um, do you sell, like, saying there about the scanning, do you sell darkroom stuff as well, like enlargers and that? Because that's another thing that, that we all know. Supply of some darkroom equipment, prices yeah, are going up, supply is going down. Um, um, no, yeah, we do. Um, it dep- that's a little bit, um, what's the word? We, we, we don't sell as much as, of, of that because a lot of that darkroom stuff that gets offered to us is in really poor condition. So the, the, a lot of the darkroom stuff, it'll just it's being shoved in an attic or it's being shoved in a basement mm. or something. For a long time, uh, I've got a box with an enlarger in it at the moment, and some guy literally said, "I'll give you it if you collect it." And I kind of said, "Well, what is it?" And he went, "It's like a, it's like a, a, a six by nine capable enlarger." But and I went and got it, and it's just, it's just, I'm gonna have to just get rid of it. Um, Maybe Adam can use it for one of his walls. Um, no, I think Adam's got stuff that's in worse condition. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's. there's it's a bit more sporadic. Is the, uh, the the dark room stuff? It, it it's got to be saleable. You know, mm. nobody wants to buy. I mean, they are perfectly fine, but nobody really wants to buy trays that are really stained and minging because it just like just the hardest to sell them. Like they they function as trays, but they're just a bit grim, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you don't know wh- whose basement they've it, been in, it doesn't look good for us if we're selling stuff that's like all stained and minging. You know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's, the the dark room stuff is a bit bit hit and miss but we, we if it's good if it's good condition when we get it in we do we do stock it oh we do we actually do have um i mean patterson make things brand mm. new you can buy brand new patterson tanks you can buy brand new trays you can buy brand new anything from patterson dark room timers whatever um it's just expensive yeah no it's more the enlarges and that kind of like the bespoke uh, optical equipment and the lenses for that that um that are tougher um and becoming more difficult and then are you seeing um as we think ahead and like as you say the the supply of these cameras is finite in that no one's making them new does that worry you that you're in a business where theoretically at some point the cameras will run out or do you think that's so far away that um yeah no that is that is something i've had to consider um i think as well um a lot of stuff i mean a lot of stuff comes from abroad like you can buy a lot of things from Japan, but we also send like a lot of things, a lot of the expensive uh, high end stuff. It does end up going to, to China and the Far East, and I think eventually, like maybe the supply here will dry up. I don't know. Um, but I mean, there are a lot of cameras out there, and there are there is a lot of stuff, but um, I, yeah, I suppose in theory, eventually it's gonna not run out, but it's gonna become harder to find these things. Mm. Uh, I mean, in fairness, I think, I mean, one thing that I remember hearing um, uh, Yuho from Camera Rescue talking about this, and he'd done the calculations of how many cameras are probably in cupboards in Europe, and I can't remember how many crazy millions it was, and, you know, that, that's what he talks about, like, his job is to rescue them kind of thing, and I think that made me feel a lot better when you actually sit down and do the maths of how many people will have cameras in their cupboards, how many, how many Nikon were, were created, how many OM1s were built, like, and those things survive. People aren't going to throw them out in the trash. Like a lot of them will still be out there. Um, 
that makes me feel better. And then it's, you know, you'd like to think that at some point the industry w would come through. And also like you as a specialist camera store who has that service and that knowledge, you'd like to think it would be the eBay people and the random chances that would, that would, that would find it harder before that. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it, yeah, like a, a, a good portion of our trade comes from people part exchanging their, their stuff they already have. You know, they've got, they've got a Canon A1 and they want a Bronica, so they'll chop that in. And then that keeps the cycle going. Um, and then maybe they get bored of the Bronica and they want a large format because they're a bit weird. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> or maybe they trade in the first ever chroma carbon fiber and they want a Zenit. <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that would be. <laughs> Amazing. All right then. Well, it's ten past nine. We've taken up um, more time than I I said to you we would. Um, Graham, is there anything on your mind that you uh that you haven't covered or or, or you yes. fancy asking? One last question. Um, I don't I don't think this has come up, but um, what camera do you get people coming in and actually asking for the most? Do you get people coming in and sort of saying? Or have you got one of these? Is there anything that stands out at the moment? Oh, there's probably a few. I think it, it tends to be those hyped up ones, um, the ones that are really like, like, for lack of a better word, fashionable um, at the moment. It's it's like the Contax T2 um, or the MJU2 or mm, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, or Mamiya 6, Leica M6, uh, Mamiya 7. Um, just or the X-Pan, it just, it tends to be those. Those are the ones that if we get them in stock, they don't tend to last like a day on the website because somebody's after them and we tend to price things as fairly as we can. So um, yeah, um, we used to have a wanted list, uh, like a spreadsheet, you know, somebody would say, hey, I'm looking for one of these, but it got, that got a bit confusing and a bit, a bit outdated. So um, we don't do that anymore. So um, yeah, it, it tends, I think people tend to go on our site and hit F5 and just sit there all day. <laughs> like, like, and, then, and then they'll be like, oh my God, an M6, buy it. Um, but, um, <laughs> yeah, because do you do, like, yeah, I was about to say, because it's not like you, you don't put, um, you know, you don't have like a, you don't have a permanent M6 page where people can sign up for notifications and they get hit. No, no, people no. literally need to just be, wake up in the morning, look at Instagram, Check the M6, <laughs> check the Leica yeah. page on where your cameras yeah. go to work. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not like analog one, Lander, where you can go and see all the stuff you can't buy. Exactly, exactly. Those well, bastards. Yeah, to be fair, I mean, I, the thing that winds me up most is um, when you go on, when you go, I, it happened earlier. I was looking at a camera dealer's site earlier, and when you go on it, and like there's a big page full of great stuff, but it's all sold out. So I guess at least our website isn't like that. That <laughs> Who would have a website like that? That's what I want to know. That would be terrible. <laughs> Not my fault. That's the thing when it Factory. when it restocks, you can you can notify the customers, which is great. But it's just uh, no, yeah. I know, no, no. And honestly, like jokes aside, like it's something I struggle with because it's the, it's the flip, the the out of stock, the products that are there but out of stock is inherently frustrating. Um, yet at the same time when you know it comes in and out but no it, it is interesting and as you say it, it's good because it means people regularly check and also um yeah it, it's a sign that you are pricing it fairly because if you wanted it to last longer you'd double the price and it would sell out in three days rather than one day but um but that's but, but then you get a reputation for price gouging so it's like how do i do this so it's a reasonable price but also not stupidly cheap so that either somebody is going to buy it and resell it for a premium which yeah yeah, yeah. that winds me up um, and do you see that? Do you see people? Oh who... yeah, like I won't, like, I'm not going to mention people, but um, yeah, we've we've had people buy stuff, uh, and then it'll sit, it'll appear on their website um, for just insane money, like a, a, like a, you know the little Minolta TC1 thing, the little point and shoot that's like really expensive. Oh, there's a little Minolta TC1 point and shoot. Um, it's a bit like a Contax T2, but it's a Minolta on it. <laughs> um, Sounds terrible. Uh, they, go for, they go for silly money, and um, yeah, we, we had we had one of those up um, for something. Let's I can't remember exactly, but let's say it was like eight fifty, eight hundred and fifty quid for a point and shoot. Um, this guy bought it. This guy bought it. I put it up on his site for like 
fourteen fifty, let's say. It would just like it, it basically put like another like five hundred quid on it, and it's just like, dude, come on, like. I much rather would have sold that to the person that was going to enjoy it, and then them not having to have a five hundred pound tax on that. But hey, that's what happens. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You, you can't control it when I walk out the door. But um, no, and actually, when it, when you were talking about I was flicking through because obviously I started with the very uh, exciting, sexy four grand cameras. But yeah, you have a lot on there that's like the the fifteen twenty. Actually, in fairness, when I was there, <laughs> I found the the section on. Um, on uh, flash and that's on my personal wish list so might order after another couple of beers <laughs> good well um that was as i say we're, we're rover running and you are literally stood outside your shop um which we love and also it must be said bloody love the the way your shop looks like because people say to me like i i it must be brilliant to be surrounded by film and i'm like i i do spend my working day surrounded by film i also spend my day surrounded by cardboard boxes and general crap that i don't tidy up Whereas you get to work in a... Oh, you can't see all the just garbage that's out of shot. Like, oh, there's just, it, there's boxes. There's, oh, there's, it's just an absolute mess in there. I wouldn't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, but hang on a minute. I'm just going to go full screen on you again. That looks like the kind of place I would want to live. Well, it's funny, actually. Um, there's not really any pictures of the shop on the website. And it turns out it's really, really difficult to photograph. I've tried a lot to take like representative pictures of the shop and like do some nice photos of it but it's there's, there's there's so much going on and there's so much different lighting and things it's really hard to photograph so i'm really trying to work on that but um yeah hopefully i can get some nice pictures of it up soon but yeah yeah and also you don't want to be taking a photo of the cameras and then people are like oh i saw you had this camera in stock that, like, that's not a stock photo <laughs> that yeah that really does happen that's the header page on the website <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So we've got um, on the front page of the slider um, and it says something like new stock every day or whatever. And there's like a bunch of cameras and we get, it's like that photo was taken like six months ago. Like obviously most of those things are gone now and we'll be, we'll be like on the front page of your website. I say you've got a nick on and you're like, no, it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> so we've, I like the fact we've now got a list of things we can do to annoy you. We can, we yeah. can randomly send you our digital photos, uh, digital cameras, sorry, and ask how much you'd, you'd charge for it. And um, we can send you broken stuff we bought on eBay for a fiver and, and say what's wrong. And we can, <laughs> we can look at your Instagram page from a year ago and request cameras we see. Um, we got, there was something, someone commented on like, a, you know, like you, you must have gone to the bottom and seen like the very first, there's a picture of me with a tripod doing that or something. And then like, there's a few more. Someone, someone commented like a couple of weeks ago saying like how much it's like, oh, my response was this post was from October, 2016. Like I didn't even, I, yeah. yeah. And he was like, yes, <laughs> how much? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's brilliant. All right then. So, um, is there anything you want to um, shamelessly uh, sell before we um, we close? You've got t-shirts. You've got t-shirts, and you've got tea towels. Which, uh, well, yeah, they're they're not they haven't arrived with me yet, but they are being produced um, at the moment by Awesome Merch. Um, there's going to be tea towels, and there's going to be some shirts with cameras on them. And then uh, my friend Caroline, she designed some tote bags uh, with cameras on them, obviously. Um, so they're going to be coming, I think, in about a week. Uh, we need to do a photo shoot with Mike, I think, with, a, with wearing a T-shirt. So you can look as beautiful as him when you wear one. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's 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 going to be Graham, that. Graham, any, any comments about the tea towels? I saw you react. <laughs> any, any it, uh, no, no comment. No, no comment on the Yorks or tea towels. No, no. Perfect. Perfect. Actually, that reminds me, though, like one of my favourite things in terms of, like, um, what is it, like, nice branding touches putting Yorkshire tea <laughs> in all of your oh, parcels. Yeah, yeah. I always oh, I, it I, makes me laugh every single time, so I'm like, this is just brilliant. Well, we did Haribo for a bit, and um, oh, well, no. vegetarians can't have it and stuff, and well, we just thought tea, tea was quite good. Actually, I completely shamelessly stole that uh, idea off, off someone else. Uh, Mike's, Mike's housemate, Jenny, uh, does a clothing company called Cosmic Drifters, and I think she did that for a bit. And I was like, "Well, that's a good idea. I'm going to steal that." Um, so yeah, it's not an original idea, I have to say, but uh, it's, it's fine. It's Even great. still, it's yeah. excellent. Like I love the fact, that, and also I don't know whether you thought about this, but the fact that so many people then seem to post like photos of 
a cup of tea with their new camera purchase. <laughs> I don't even post the camera. They'll just post the, 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 the tea bags and the note. And you're like, okay, cool. Somewhere, somewhere in Yorkshire Tea, there's a, there's like an assistant brand manager who's like, we keep getting these really like strong lights from camera lovers in Yorkshire. We're like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We I should contact them, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Well, thank you. Uh, someone, <laughs> Alan said, that's literally the only reason I order. Which I mean, <laughs> Alan, there are cheaper That's ways to buy tea bags. I don't want to ruin Howard's business, but literally, <laughs> that cannot be the cheapest way of getting them. Um, amazing. Well, Howard, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for sitting outside your beautiful shop and it doing it well. Um, yeah. It's been lovely having a beer with you, uh, Graham. Well done for restraining yourself. You you weren't as offensive as we actually expected, which is quite a compliment, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and not one I can often get. say to you. No. Um, thanks so much, everyone, for joining, and thanks so much for doing the questions and the uh, and the comments as we went through. Um, best of luck for everyone who is building a large format house right now. You've got some nice weather for a couple of weeks to to really bed in the uh, the liners. Next week's going to be fun. We've got um, Sam Sam, the Solar Can Man, who's going to come on and talk about um, a slightly different type of camera than maybe the ones we've been describing. Um, but we'll see you then. Otherwise, have a wonderful Thursday. Stay safe. Enjoy the weather. Happy shooting. Buy a buy one of uh, one of the many large format cameras that Howard recommends. Look at that chroma. <laughs> Look at that. All right then. Thanks so much, guys. See you later. Thank you.